Live from the KATC TV3 studios, this is Acadiana's News Channel at 10. Shocking news tonight out of Beauregard Parish. Officials there confirming the Tiger Island fire, a result of arson. That development top story tonight. Good evening, I'm Taylor Tool. According to LDAF, the fire began on August 22nd in a wooded pine plantation, consuming more than 31,000 acres of forest, threatening the town of Maryville and devastating more than 20 homes and structures. The investigation is ongoing. And according to the state fire marshal's office, there have been just more than 500 fires this month alone. There are more than 1,200 pairs of feet on the ground working to put the fires out across the state. The agency is predicting that 60,000 acres will be lost. And the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries is out with its own burn ban rules. The department is banning open flames at refuges, conservation areas, and other properties managed by the agency. The ban includes campfires, barbecue grills, or using matches, lighters, or any other device or instrument intended to ignite flames. Violators will be cited. I'm Christina Mondragon and with recent grass fires in Louisiana, one event is allowing people to give back to those that give so much to their community. Dallas, thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate it. In April, Fire Chief of Kaplan Jake Folk's daughter, Kate, was diagnosed with a rare disease, alpha manosidosis. They predict that one in two million births, and she is one of 15 diagnosed children in the United States right now with this particular disorder. Family and friends wearing blue, Kate's favorite color, to raise awareness and money Saturday to help with medical expenses. It's something Kate's grandmother is thankful for. This is a this is a crucial time for fire departments everywhere, but this fire department has been family for long before any of this any of this drought took place. But it is uh, it is a really a good way to give back to the fire department. Amazed but not surprised by the support of the city, Mayor of Kaplan Mike Claysol says Kate's crusade will help the family focus completely on Kate's recovery. They are actually in Minnesota this weekend uh, receiving treatment for her disease and uh, she had a successful bone marrow transplant this weekend so we're raising money today out here to help with offset their medical expenses and their travel expenses to Minnesota and back. The Folk family tells me Kate will have to spend the next 100 days recovering in a hospital in Minnesota before coming back to Kaplan. Once she is deemed healthy enough to come home, then they'll be back. We're hoping by the end of November, so they still have a, quite a road ahead of them. All proceeds from Kate's crusade will go directly to the Folk family. If you would like to donate, I have that link posted at KTC.com. In studio, Christina Mondragon, KTC TV3. Here's Bradley's 24-hour forecast. Well, another hot one out there today. Temperatures uh, mid to upper 90s, but thankfully did stay on the cooler side of 100. Temperatures currently at the top of the hour, upper 70s to uh, lower 80s uh, across the board here in uh, Acadiana. Now we do have this uh, upper level low that's just off to our west and that's kept us somewhat unsettled out there today. Not everyone saw the rainfall, but we did see a few scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon, early this evening, especially across uh, western Acadiana and say up into St. Landry Parish, but all of those showers have pretty much since come to an end. There was one, lo one lone shower there in Vermilion Bay, but that is also starting to wind down. So no major issues overnight tonight. Uh, temperatures heading for the mid and upper 70s. That's where we'll start the day tomorrow. A few coastal showers first thing tomorrow morning. Some of that activity will try to build inland uh, throughout the day. I think we'll see a similar setup tomorrow like we saw today with a few scattered showers and storms for the afternoon early evening hours at around 30 to 40 percent 95 will be your projected high so it'll be another hot day humid as well and uh, again rain chances 30 to 40 percent better rain chances into labor day we'll talk more about that and look out in the tropics in just a bit 
Thank you, Bradley. The start of September brings big changes to food stamp eligibility. Basically, more low-income Americans will be required to work in order to receive food stamps. Able-bodied adults up to 50 years old who don't have children will now have to show proof they are working at least 80 hours a month or that they are enrolled in an education or training program to receive SNAP. In October, that age requirement will increase to 52 years old. Homeless people, veterans, and adults up to 24 years old who aged out of foster Foster care are exempt from the new mandates. And continuing now with parish by parish coverage, starting in St. Landry Parish, where the annual downtown Zydeco brunch took to Courthouse Square in Opelousas this morning, a precursor to the Southwest Zydeco Festival also happening in Opelousas today. Those attending could experience the sounds of Leroy Thomas and the Zydeco Roadrunners while enjoying some tasty downtown treats. Visiting, I actually moved here now after 50 years. I was gone to California. This is my first Zydeco Festival here in Opelousas, and it's really been fun, especially the breakfast. It's called, so I like it. Uh, the uh, Leroy Thomas Zydeco Roadrunners. Oh my gosh, is the best. Thank you very much for having me. I love Louisiana, except for the humidity. Also in St. Landry Parish, an Opelousas man is facing multiple charges, including attempted second-degree murder following a Friday shooting on South Union Street. It happened at Al's Tires, where police tell us a customer was complaining about a tire she had purchased. That's when officers say Nathan Morton, the customer's brother, fired several shots at an employee, leaving him with a gunshot wound to the leg. That employee is now out of the hospital. In St. Mary Parish, a conviction now made in the 2018 murder of Patricia Russo, a retired principal in Morgan City. After a four-day trial, a jury finding Michael Guidry guilty of manslaughter. Russo was found dead in her home in October 2018, with surveillance cameras, bank and phone records helping investigators tie Guidry to her killing. Sentencing is set for early November. In lighter news out of Morgan City, there's still time to attend the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival. Through Monday, you can celebrate 88 years of tradition and free family fun in the historic downtown district, along with Cajun and Creole dishes and traditional experiences, such as the Blessing of the Fleet tomorrow morning. We are open today, tomorrow, and Monday. We have three major areas of concentration. We have the Carnival, and we have the Craft Show and Vendors. And then in Lawrence Park, we have a variety of things, music stage, children's village, and activities of various interest in Lawrence Park. And we're all within a full block radius of everything. And in Lafayette Parish, the proposed ordinance aiming to regulate short-term rentals in Lafayette put off yet again. This is the third time council member Andy Nockham's proposal has been pushed back. The ordinance is meant to prohibit short-term rentals like Airbnbs and zones for single families. Nockham says the delay will give more time for the legal department to make amendments. And staying in Lafayette, if you're looking to visit Houston but don't feel like driving, you'll soon be able to fly out of Lafayette Regional nonstop. This comes as United Airlines adds two new direct flights from Lafayette to Houston beginning next Wednesday. Airport officials tell us the first plane will leave the tarmac at 5.20 a.m., increasing the number of daily flights to six a day. But if you're interested, keep in mind booking for these flights is already available, and we made it easy for you with the link to do so posted right now on KATC.com. And if you live in Iberia Parish and are looking to start or grow your own business, a new small business program is on the way. It's thanks to a partnership between UL's College of Business and the City of New Iberia. Participants living in New Iberia will get to learn various business models while also networking with local business owners. We're told those space is limited, so those interested should apply as soon as possible. The Accelerate program is a program for entrepreneurs and small business owners. Um, it's almost like a basic business one-on-one -on -one program. We talk about things like the entrepreneurial dream, creating a business plan, um, financing the legal aspect of business, marketing and operations. Um, so that it doesn't matter where someone is in their business journey, there's something for them. And still to come, weather a major determining factor in whether you're keeping up with some favorite Labor Day traditions. We break down the reasons why right here on TV3 at 10.